hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House at the front end of November, and I couldn't be more excited about what that means. It means mustaches. M4K. That's the one. That's the one. We got Chris in the house tonight. It's been a long time since you've been on, since I guess the last year on the ski trip, man. How are you? Good, man. Thanks. Good to have you here, and I'm, I'm really excited. We got a special guest in the house. We've got Keo here. We'll just go with that. That's going to be your name. <laughs> it is actually his name, but we got Keo here. He is the president this year. It's a, is that an honorary position of M4K? It's an appointed position. It's an appointed position. So we've got Keo here. He's the president this year of M4K. You guys know about M4K because that is the charity that we are, uh, or the organization that we are all involved in. Where we're growing mustaches for a variety of charities. Keo, thank you so much for joining us tonight and helping us spread the word. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Just honored to be a part of uh, Richmond's favorite sports podcast. <laughs> that damn joke is going to live on forever. Thank you, Richmond.com, for voting us uh, one of the best sports podcasts in all of Richmond. Never talking about sports. But that's how that works sometimes. Any, any recognition, I guess, is good recognition. Is that, is that the uh, motto you guys live by, or you guys just want good press? We would prefer good press. Uh, there can be some bad press with mustaches, so we want to steer clear of those kinds of things. I've never seen it. No, that's why they have that bylaw. It has to be corner to corner. <laughs> yeah, does that... I, I actually am wondering about that. Does that mean I can't come down into like a Fu Man chew a bit? I mean, I assume I mean, no, it's... Nobody's going to shave you. Um, it does take you out of consideration for the sweetest stash award. Well, okay, that's good to know. Okay, not that I'm going to win the sweetest stash because I've I've learned something about my mustache this year. My mustache sucks, dude. <laughs> like I don't have a good mustache. It's coming in very very gray and 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 light patchy. It's I wouldn't call it patchy so much as bad. I think patchy at least has character. You know what I mean? Well, speaking from experience, it, it definitely gets better every time you try and do it. So Yeah, that was advice my buddy gave me when I came over at 16 years old crying about my performance. And he said, buddy, it gets better every time you do it. And uh, I did. I got, I got much better at it. Got two kids. <laughs> <laughs> Things are looking up. As far as anyone knows, you're batting a 1,000, right? Yeah, except for that girl on that fateful night when I was 16 years <laughs> old. She's like, oh, he's batting 666 at best. <laughs> But that's a whole other story for another time. I don't know that we need to get into that. Did you know who had a sweet mustache I just thought of? Who's that? Snoopy's alter ego from the oh, Peanuts. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he did. You remember, like, he showed up like a rambling man with a... He's got, like, a duster hat. Yeah. Like, he's got, like, a... It's not a cowboy hat, but it's definitely in the ballpark. Yeah. He's got, like, a Mexican name, too, doesn't it? It's, like, Pablo or something. <laughs> that sounds right. And he did have a sweet stash. Like, I was digging that. Maybe that's what I'll go dressed up as at the Stash Bash. Is Snoopy. Oh, that's not bad. Snoopy's alter ego. That would fit in with the Tombstone theme, right? I mean, he kind of fits. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, can, if you can pull off the Snoopy alter ego mustache and roll to the Stash Bash, you'll, you're right back in it with Sweetest Stash. That's what I'm talking about. So what is Sweetest Stash exactly? I've never actually figured it out. So that's basically the, the all-time award that you can get every year. Um, we have a few awards. You know, we'll give one to the, the highest individual fundraiser. We give one to the guy that recruits the best. But then the overall winner of the season is given the sweetest stash, which gets the green jacket. And it's Ooh. a pretty impressive situation. Now, I can understand how the other ones are calculated. Most money raised. Fairly simple equation. Just look at the dollars raised. Uh, biggest recruiter, most people on their team, or most people that wrote them in as their recruiter. The Swedish stash sounds a bit arbitrary. How does that work? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> but so you just everyone looks and goes, that dude's got the Swedish stash? No, actually, honestly, it's more of a service award. Um, so 
generally speaking, we'll 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 pick somebody that has uh, put in a lot of time with M4K, Ugh, I'm raised out. raised a for, fair amount of money, promoted M4K. You're you're in. You guys have worked hard for us, so we definitely you're, do you're that. In contention. There's there's no doubt about that. We promote. That's kind of our that's kind of our thing. No, I say I say we loosely. We don't have Ely or Troy here tonight, unfortunately, or Tro- fortunately. Well, some of that equation will say hashtag TFD or, yeah, or TFP. I miss Ely. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Troy took a vacation. He somehow thought he could take a vacation with his family to Disney World and not have us get upset. Like, what is that family? It's ridiculous. <laughs> he was. I saw him last night. He sent me a message. And he was like all proud of himself. He was drinking a beer at Epcot. And then I got another message like 30 minutes later. He's like, these things are like 10 bucks. I'm out. No more drinking <laughs> at Epcot. <laughs> so he's, he's finding out that Disney is synonymous with really, really expensive. Yeah, he planned that whole trip around the world at Epcot. Dropped it, off at Mexico. You, you start and go, all right, this is going to be great. You're like, how many fucking countries are there? I can't do this, man. At least I can't drink around the world. I think I could pull it off. It would just take, uh, I'd have to stop raising donations for, for children and focus on a Disney fund, but I yeah. could do it. It's, it's not exactly cheap. So, it's probably best he didn't drink enough to hurl on Space Mountain anyway. No, you don't want to go around that, that whole place with the kids in tow. I would think that'd be a pretty fun like date night, though. Why not? It, cheap, too. Goo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, brutal. Probably won't be batting a 1,000 after that. No, that's my record. <laughs> that's, that's mine to keep. So, but uh, Akio, I do want to ask you some questions about M4K because I get a lot of questions that that people ask me about about what this is, how it works, kind of the the whole nine. A lot of people ask me some like tough questions, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna hit you with them, and then we'll see what the answers that I go ahead and uh, start telling people going forward. So, you guys raise money for a variety of charities, right? Yep, that's right. We got about four core charities i would say and uh that's uh ask uh childhood cancer foundation um this uh scan which is stop child abuse now children's hospital of richmond and uh feed more um this year we're also uh going to be adding in uh some smaller charities that we've helped out in the past a little bit uh cameron k gallagher foundation uh the friends association and then there'll be probably a couple more others that we help out in a little smaller fashion. That's awesome. Because you guys, how much money did you guys raise last year for these these charities? Are you allowed to disclose that kind of information? Oh yeah, that's completely public knowledge. We raised over two hundred sixty eight thousand uh, dollars just during God. November on um, the back so of mustaches. On the back of mustaches, it, it really goes to show you the the unifying message that a mustache can bring. Um, that's a way to put it. I'll take that. That sounded really good when you said that. That's not actually though. I, I will be honest. I went to my first because I've always been a sideline guy. I go to the stash bash. I think I've been more of a drinker. I've just enjoyed drinking with you guys. I'm like, hey, these guys with all these mustaches are pretty fun to party with. And then come December, I'm like, where'd all my friends go? Like, I don't know. I don't know where any of these. People, it's so easy to identify you guys with 150 mustaches in a room. I'm like, I'm here. I made it. That's. This is the stash bash. But I've been doing that ever since you got involved. You, so whatever year you started, I went to that, what I consider my first stash bash, which I think was probably like year three or something. Am I close? Mm, well, or, we started, I started in 2009. Um, we, as an organization, we started in 2003. So I was pretty late to the game, actually. The year I started, we had, we had blossomed from, I think, the year before – they had like 15 guys doing it, maybe 20. In the year I did it, they had 50. Um, and So I've been lying to people. I've been telling people that I've been <laughs> at every stash bash. I need to go ahead and retract that from a handful of people. So You've sorry. been in most of the ones that have been more formally organized. The, the, the stash bashes of previous years were basically we all just went to the same bar we all went to, but this time we went in a costume. So you went from 15 to 50. What about this year? This year we have over 160. So the, the counts are people are still straggling in, but we got about 160 right now. So. Is it still too late to start growing? I mean, do some people jump in late? I mean, it's never too late to start growing, especially this early. So we're only we're less than a week in, so 
for about a weekend, so there's plenty of time to to get involved and come raise some money for us. So. I would still love to get some growers on the uh, ITPH squad because I think we got one last week, didn't we? We did. We got Ed. Yeah. I was excited to see him come on board. That's going to be a sweet Ed stash. has been a long time supporter of M4K. Could never get him to actually grow a mustache. So I'm absolutely going to credit you guys to for getting him on board because that is I'm an impressive ex- pull. I'm excited, man, because if, if the amount of hair that has, has left his head shows up <laughs> on his lip, that dude's going to have one heck of a stash. But if his lip has the same... Uh, deficiency that we see on his dome it's gonna be uh interesting looking i saw him today it's gonna it's gonna be a challenge it's gonna be a challenge <laughs> oh no <laughs> well, i can't talk smack because both of you yours is actually a little bit stronger than yours is the strongest in the room i believe but you've been growing since oh nine right right so i understand that yours is trained and understands that when the the leaves start changing color it just naturally comes out whereas mine I never used to start growing a beard till Thanksgiving, so I think mine's still in hibernation based on my, my typical trend. So I started a little early, and it's trash. And, and Chris, yours actually is coming in very dark. It's getting there. It's going to look, it's gonna look good. So I'm a little, I'm a little jealous because I'm, I'm clearly the, uh, the weakest stash in the room at the moment, but I'll get there. I'll get there. I have a whole month. It's, not, it's definitely not how you start. It's all about how you finish. I can promise you that, both from a fundraising standpoint and a growing standpoint. You know what I did today for the first time ever? I actually posted on Facebook. I've never done that, I've, <laughs> which, is, which is pretty – what happens is when I upload the podcast, it used to at least actually – it would just forward to my account. And now sometimes I'll take it and just kind of like re-forward so it, it shows up there. But so everybody who's my friend, all they know about me – is I'm completely self-serving. I bring them nothing because I just, I send them my podcast. I'm like, hey, I want you to listen to this. And now after a few years, I'm like, oh, and money'd be great too. That's all they know about me. They don't know if I have the family, friends, just listen to this and pay me. Well, I'm the same way with that. I, I'd never post on Facebook until this time of year, but when I do, I'm convinced that you have to get into the Facebook algorithms. So I start liking everything that I see about every friend that I sort of know that lives in the right, Richmond right. area so they can see all of the stuff that I post because otherwise I'm convinced that, n- that no one sees anything I post. I have to like stuff? To, okay, I'm going to have to step up my game. This is going to be an interesting month for me. We get carpal tunnel and a mustache. I'm psyched. I don't know if there's any science behind that. I'm just, it's what I've decided because considering I, I started liking things and then people started liking things of mine back. So I'm assuming they didn't see any of the other cool ass shit that I did. So that's either guilt or it's an algorithm of sorts. <laughs> so I don't know which it is, but we'll, I'm willing to, uh, to jump in on that. I will log in eh, once a week and like stuff and then the next day post. And hope that I can either ride the guilt or algorithm. Exactly. I dig it. I dig it. So this year, if if last year you had 260 and change, I am assuming the goal is to do better, especially because you're the president this year, so that would reflect on you. Uh, Yeah. No pressure? Not trying to... No, the goal this year, I think we set it at 275. It was a modest goal, but... uh, It's not a modest modest goal. goal. (laughs) It's a huge good number, man. (laughs) Modest growth is what I was going for. Modest growth, but uh, but yeah, two seventy five is what we're aiming for. But I think we can hit three hundred. Damn, nice. I hope so, man. If I if the first year I'm on board and the year you're president, we're able to hit that. And Chris, this is your first year, right? Yeah, first year growing. So we're all first timers. In fact, I think I want to throw the gauntlet down that in the month of November, no one on the podcast can be without mustache. I don't care if you just grow it to come on the show. I'm willing to accept it, but you should be doing it for M4K. This is a a fantastic charity. All of those charities you mentioned, every one of those is really some of the it's like the it's like the who's who of of children's charities, at least in our area. Do do those charities only serve the Richmond area or do they branch out into other parts of Virginia? So SCAN and Children's Hospital um, most definitely serve other areas, but we focus our money on to the Richmond chapters. So okay. they're they're like M4K. There's a national chapter, but then we focus on the Richmond chapter. So that's who we give our money to. Ask is a local 
charity. Um, so they're only doing. I mean, they they serve all the way up to Fredericksburg though, so it is a Central Virginia type of thing. Okay, down to Petersburg as well. Um, and well, I won't say that they don't go farther, but uh, and then feed more. Is Feedmore? I mean, they're everywhere too. They just. Uh, I think Feedmore doesn't get enough enough credit because it's it's so easy to say I want to get behind, you know, a uh, uh, cancer research or helping children with cancer or to stop child abuse, and these are all fantastic causes. Like I, I get it, but I think people lose sight of the fact that even a healthy child that's starving isn't going to perform well, and that that kind of performance at this stage in their life that can have ramifications for their entire life. And I think it's absolutely just as important to make sure that these children are, are, are fed and that they actually have a fighting chance at, at becoming interested in something and becoming good people and, and excelling in school. And that, it all comes down to the most basic, you know, of fundamentals, which is food, clothing, shelter. And I mean, they, they certainly help. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the first year that we donated to them, we took all the money we, we were going to give them, and we bought a bunch of those uh, backpacks yeah. that, that you've heard about on the radio. Um, and the numbers that they gave us, and I can't really spit them back because I don't remember them all, but the numbers that they gave us about the amount of kids that you can help with, with those backpacks is just astounding. And, it, and it's even more astounding to realize the numbers we were helping and not helping all of them. That's what I think people lose sight of is that how many kids are actually in need of something like that. And that's why I'm glad to see that one. I, I look again, I think all all of them are absolutely worthy, but I think that's the one people are like, Really? You're feeding them? I'm like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, gotta I mean, feed them. You see the numbers on the kids that, you know, qualify for the free and, and reduced lunches and I mean, it, it's just shocking. It really is. And and so anytime you can and then those kids go into summer and, well, school can't provide that anymore because they're not there. So anything you can do to, so to they're year round. curb that. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. So the question that I've been getting, though, is that you kind of hear like some some negative press about, you know, only this much of the money ends up going to to a charity because you have these organizations and they have a lot of overhead. They got a lot of different things that. And, and oftentimes these not-for-profits, there's some people in there driving around in Mercedes and BMWs, and they, they clearly are, are profiting on some level. So I, I got to ask you, because people do ask me, how much of the money, say I, I donate $50 to a grower, how much of that money is actually going to find its way to these charities? Uh, so 100% in that instance. Um, so we use our corporate sponsors to pay for our, all of our operating costs, which are very minimal because we're a 100% volunteer organization. So we are very much just a bunch of dudes that want to get money in and get money back out as quickly as possible. We don't want to be irresponsible for it, quite frankly. <laughs> <Yeah. So laughs> we, don't, we don't need audits. We don't need any of that. We want to take the money and then pass it along. So um, every... Every in-kind donation from a personal standpoint is donated directly to one of our charities. So as president, you're saying you didn't get a new Beamer. I have <laughs> not gotten a new Beamer. I am still cruising in my 2011 Impala. It's hot for one reason. but Oh, it's stolen. Well, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't don't know that I would have put that out there. That's oh, interesting. It, that was more of a Paris Hilton hot. Nice. Um, She's almost 40, by the way. <laughs> I saw that the other day. I was like, my God. Yeah, the kids are like, Paris who? Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, and, oh, her porn is so grainy now. It's like <laughs> the quality. It's like if you watch an NFL game from like 99, it's like, God, that really is the quality. It was trash. I can't believe that. And I, I've, I've noticed Paris doesn't, doesn't hold up if you go back and watch some of her, her old films, if you will. <laughs> to clarify, I meant a Paris Hilton term hot, not what she looked like. Because I didn't even really find her that attractive. Her sex video was cool, though. Well, oh, I found her attractive. I, I've actually stayed at Hilton's when, <laughs> when all things are equal. I just stay at Hilton's. It actually worked for me. I don't think that was, like, the intention there. But if I'm like, hmm. Brand recognition. Yeah, it'd be like, Marriott, Hilton. You know what? I'm going to stay at the Hilton. Same price. And I like to support the family. I like the moral, <laughs> I like the moral compass on those, those people. But that's my own demons. You guys stay where you want. And we will not be donating any money to the uh, Paris Hilton Foundation. That's a fact. Right. And nothing is going to 
any of our beamers. So I am actually really glad though, because I was I was afraid that question might be like we make it a point that fifty cents of every dollar ends up in the hands of the charities. The fact that it's it really is in kind donations. So that means everybody who's out there who donates to anybody who's growing for M four K, one hundred percent, one hundred cents of every dollar is going to end up with the charity. That is unheard of in this day and age, and I think it is something that should be shouted from the mountaintops. Yeah, I mean, it, absolutely. Like it, you can actually, because we are an official five hundred one c three, so you can look up if you have the time or or the inclination <laughs> where where our money or what percentage of our money is is taken from operating costs, and um, we are. I think it was like nine or eight percent. So, I, well, and the other part of that is our operating costs remain pretty stagnant compared to the money that we're raising. So every year we raise more, obviously that goes down. But, uh, but yeah, I think we were like eight or 9%, which is in the bottom, like 5% of all charities. That's nice. amazing, man. That's awesome. And I've noticed you guys, even some of the breweries around here are now making beers where they're donating at least a, a portion of the proceeds from that. Now I wouldn't dare go ask some brewer how much of that's actually going. Cause I don't know, and I don't want. I don't want to know, but I do. I have been drinking. I'm not even sure about that. I it's, have been it's drinking. Free money. Yeah, I mean it's free money because I'm going to drink the beers anyway. So I've been I've been noticing that as I go around to some of the Richmond breweries. Uh, there was uh, I don't know how to say this Vassen or Vassen Vassen. They had they had like three different beers on their board the other day that the money was going to ask, and I was like, that's that's fantastic. So you guys are managing to get the breweries to step up. And that's, well, I mean, that's the cool thing about all the breweries around town, too, though. That, that's one thing they've all made a focus of doing, um, whether it was Hardywood in the past or this year, you know, the Vossen and the uh, Midnight and uh, Triple Crossing, Three Notched, all the, the answer. They all love giving back to the local community. So it's been it hasn't been a hard sell. Like we walk in and say, hey, you guys, here's what we want to do. Here's what we were thinking. They might not necessarily have the time or the capacity to brew us a beer, but some of them have at least offered to rename their beers. So, like, I think Triple Crossing. I'll Cro take that. I think the night of the Stash Bash, Triple Crossing's going to rename their beer to uh, Falcon Smash to the Falcon Stash. Nice. Finally. That should get rid of that hot bitterness. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> It'll be, it's a little maltier now. I see that. Yeah, try this one now, Eli. You'll like it this time. Yeah, you're going to love it. Look, it's a deli winner this time, isn't it? You can margin. So, <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's that's really great stuff. I have absolutely, I have been seriously on, on a on a serious note. I have been really taken aback by your dedication to this organization through through all of these years. I mean, when you first started doing this, it was it was just something you would you would do. I don't know what originally got you into it. I just I, I I've known you for a long time. I know you're a good person, so it probably just resonated with you. But you'd been doing it for years, and then, you know, a few years back, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up, but you had actually, you had had a, uh, a cancer scare, and you were, you were fighting cancer one of the years and going through, through treatment, and that was, you know, that was, that, was a, that was a tough time in your life, to say, to say the least. And even during that time when you were going through treatment, you grew a mustache and raised money for these charities. I don't know if you want to expand on that, but I was, I was blown away at that kind of commitment and, and the ability to see beyond yourself and still worry about other people. I think it's an admirable quality and I don't know many people who are that selfless, man. So kudos to you, but please. Well, I, I appreciate that. But I mean, so when I first got started, you know, one of my buddies told me what they were doing and, and, we were young, like I, we were married, but I, I didn't have any kids yet. I think you, you might have had one um, at that point, but I well, didn't have any kids yet. So I do bat a thousand. It wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't like I had a kid with cancer that I need, felt like I suddenly needed to dive in into something and, and get involved. It was just, you know, kids are cool and it's an easy thing to do. And it's a cool way to give back to the community and have fun doing it. Um, so like you said, last, last or 2016, I guess it was, I got diagnosed with colon cancer, had surgery, started chemo in September, November rolled around. And I was a little nervous cause I'd started losing a little bit of hair and wasn't sure what was really going to come out when I started yeah. trying to grow a mustache, which 
Um, but, uh, but, and, and everybody was like, dude, you don't have to do this. And I said, you know what? I I've just gone through two months of chemo and if it sucks for me, I can't imagine what it feels like to be four, five, six, seven, and going through this. Like I, it, it, that's what resonated with me. I couldn't, I couldn't handle the idea of not trying to help out when I know that there's children out there going through the same thing that I was. Yeah, mm. I, I find it so. It's just impressive, man. That honestly, that was a time in your life where no one would have. No one would have even looked at you different if you said, look, I got to focus on myself here. I've got things. I need to raise money for, for me and my family and do this. And you still took it upon yourself to think about everybody else and do this. And I just that inspired me. That brought me closer to the organization. And I think that really is kind of what precipitated me, me doing this now. I was after I saw that happen, I said, I don't know that I can sit on the sideline anymore and be selfish i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do this so kudos to you man well Just i appreciate it but i mean you know you go through some of these tours like with the ask would take us through a tour they're they're they've got a spot in the children's hospital over there down in downtown the new children's hospital and you know you see all these kids just troopers man like they they look like it's not not bothering them at all and you know every day it's killing them and it's killing their families Yep. Killing their brothers and sisters, so I mean, and I, it's, so that's that's one of the main reasons I guess I feel a little closer to ask now because they actually sure. go out. They they run programs for not only the kids with the cancer, but they have uh, sibling days. Well, they'll take out all the siblings of all the kids because oh, a lot that's of times amazing. you know the, the siblings kind of get forgotten. Like I mean, not not intentionally, but mom and dad are spending so no, much. They're time. pretty focused. They've yeah, got a serious problem in their family. So I mean, there there's so so many cool things that these these different charities are doing, and it's like, uh, well, if I if I can't rally for a little something like that, then there's no reason to be out here. And I'm just, I just have, like, I'm hungry all the time, so I think that's why I gravitate towards feed more. <laughs> so I'm just like <laughs> this fat kid trying to get out, <laughs> so I think maybe that's why you're like I really associate with ass because you've been through all this like horrible stuff, and I'm like. Sure could go for some food. I'm a scumbag. But I'm uh <laughs> but at least I'm involved this year, you know? Scumbags unite with some of the good people in the world and we can do good things. Yeah, Kennedy's the one who gets the backpack and he says, There any cheeseburgers in here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't I just have another fun dip? Like, come on, guys, there's not enough carbs in here. Get some chips in these bags. Where's my snack pack? <laughs> no, nah, man. It's 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 awesome. Dude, Chris, I just saw your phone. Your phone lighting up over there. Dad. Is that a uh, a text message from your favorite candidate? Is that what you're getting over there? <laughs> Let me check. Have you guys been seeing these? I've noticed that that people are getting a ridiculous amount of text messages from political candidates. Is yeah, it's been nuts. I think I had four today before eleven a.m. So this is and and you you were over here the other day, Keo. You were talking about how you're getting text messages from. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Canada. It started out as just generic, like, hey, go to the polls and vote. And then today, the last few days, they started getting personal, like, hey, this is Jimmy. I just want to make sure you're voting Democrat today. Ah, so they, they ease in with the text, just being like, don't forget to register. Don't forget to vote. And then as you get closer, they're like, don't vote for that scumbag. That dude was voting against children. Right. Like, is this legal? I mean, how do they, because my understanding is you can't send a text message to anybody unless they have explicitly opted in for a text message, because I, I work in that world, and that's a big no-no. We have to stay the hell away from texting people anything. Really? Yeah, like, that is, that is like, a big breach of, of well, the law. <laughs> it's not, you can't do that. You can't just send a text message to somebody unsolicited, so at some point, it seems like everybody I know has opted in somehow, and I'm trying to figure out where this comes from. Because in this room, 66% of the people have gotten these texts. I fortunately have not, thank goodness. But I don't understand how this is happening. So you're getting them. Um, how, many, how many do you think you've gotten over the last month? I mean, it hasn't been a complete barrage for me. It, maybe 10. 
Swallow. Okay, so it's not as annoying as your fantasy football reminders. Cause I'll tell you, they're kill. not doing it for my phones, though, because 90% of the time, it is two text messages that are one message. Okay. So, so somebody's got a flip phone out there. That's, that's interesting. Probably burner phones. They better be, or mm-hmm. people are going to get busted. In fact, a really smart thing to do with the Republicans should just start texting all kinds of encouraging Democratic messages because eventually the Democrats will get shut down, or vice versa. You know, whichever way you lean, I just think that's probably not a bad idea. Get them busted. Could work. Yeah, the, ne- the ads were rough this year. They were all negative. I didn't see anything that positive this year. Like, I honestly had to go online the other day to figure out where people stand on all of the views because all I knew was that everybody was a sack of shit. That was the only thing I was 100% certain about. In fact, my kids have been coming home. They haven't told me one positive thing. They just keep telling me who's a liar and who stinks. (laughs) And it comes down to just who's been putting the most ads out there that are just bashing because that's all they know. They just know the name of the person they hate. They don't know the name of the person they like. I'm like, well, who who should I be voting for? Like, can you tell? Well, just just not the liar. Like, well, they're all liars. Let's get that. Let's get that just on the off the table now. Every one of them lies. Like, well, then that's not good. We're like, eh, you'll figure that out as we get older. But I didn't know where anyone stood. I had to go like figure this out. Turns out they're exactly who I thought they were. <laughs> they're right down the party line, <laughs> like across the board. I didn't see anyone really branching out. Right. So, no, you vote for the liar. Who has $9 million to spend. That's basically it. Like, whoever bashed the hardest, it's certainly a different, a different time. But the text message thing threw me for a loop. I've never, I've never seen that before. So I actually had a guy, you know, old grandpa stops into my front porch and knocks on the door and says, oh, can I talk to you for a few minutes? Uh-huh. You know, here's the reasons that, you know, we're supporting so-and-so. And, you know, we hope that you're on board with us. And he had his little spreadsheet and I saw him check a box next to my name. Like, you're in. And had my phone number on the sheet, too. And I think really, he took that conversation to mean I'm willing to accept messages. Did you start getting texts after that? Yep. Nice. Yeah. So that's it. He got... That's what I'm guessing. He went back and said, yeah, I got express written consent from all these people. But you didn't sign anything. No. They just... That must be where it's coming from. Did you ever get polled this year by anybody? No, I don't think I've ever talking about talked to anybody, but there's a lot of fine print on things that I don't read. So <laughs> I read some I probably opted into something. There was a guy the other day that a software company in their terms and conditions buried like 80 percent of the way down. They had a little clause. They're like, if you call this number, we'll give you like a thousand dollars. And this guy was like, that can't be right. So he agreed to the terms and conditions, called the number. was like, I've got this software. I saw this in your clause and they were like, you're the first person that's ever called us on it. We've had this terms and conditions out there for a year. We were just wondering if anybody would ever take the time. We'll give you your thousand dollars. Nice. This software company actually just gave the dude a thousand dollars. I just saw this on like across my feed the other day. I was like, damn, I got to start reading those. But then I was like, I wouldn't have a job. Is it really worth reading every one of these? Because it would take all my time. I agree to shit. I mean, I think Apple's is like. 35 pages long like yeah, if, you, if you printed it out but then trying to look at it on your phone it's like yeah it's seven miserable. days worth of reading I mean, that's a lot of craps like you got to sit there and just save all those up for toilet reading <laughs> till you find the clause for a thousand dollars and i don't think they're in there that often but this guy found it i guess you know it it pays to read through them on some on some level I like the websites where they don't even make you read it. They just have you check the box that says you did read it. Yeah, it used to be they'd like make you scroll down right, so you'd get right, to the bottom right. to find the box. Right. Now they've like completely given yeah. up. Here's a link to it. Tell us you read it. You're like, you know, I couldn't possibly have read it because I just clicked a box at the top and I didn't go the four pages in. Like I liked it when they at least made me fake it. I felt like, okay. We all know that we're playing a game here, but at least I'm playing the game. Now it's like there's no rules. It's just like, yeah, click, whatever. Text message. Don't forget to vote Democrat. Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) They just come at you. Well, you guys opted in for something. Yeah. I don't know at what point, but it went down. It's it's wild. So I got something today. If you guys are, are you, are you guys, uh, you guys down to drink a couple beers? We can't do a deli tonight, but I've got something that I I definitely want to try. That I'm very in- intrigued about. 
A decky. Yeah, what's what's a decky? Does Keo like it? Okay. We'll we'll award our I first. I guess that'd be Deck Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not get let's not get lost in semantics. So let's we can award a Deck Lee. So the gingerbread stout release, we've talked about this in years past that we have a brewery here in Richmond called Hardywood and they have a, a a beer called Gingerbread Stout that has really garnered quite the cult following and the whole reason this went down is because years ago they got a, a perfect 100 from Beer Advocate, and that it, it very rarely happens that you'll get one of those. And they awarded them a 100. And then the next year, when they were making the beer, they had accidentally, accidentally, it, it would, I, I would have to think that this was accidentally, but they made the vat, they had all the stuff, and they started filling up kegs one day. They ran out of time at the end of the day. They shut everything down. They were going to bottle the next day. Everyone went home from work, and this guy had left it open just a little on the spout, and all of it spilled out on the floor. And because of this, they lost you know, 80% of their yield of gingerbread stout that year. Well, what it did in combination with getting that 100 and then losing it all the next year, it became one of the most hard-to-find beers because everyone was clamoring for it. Now they make this stuff like it's damn Budweiser. I mean, they make so much of it. But I accidentally went to Hardywood on, on Saturday. Well, I didn't accidentally go. To, I was intending to go to Hardywood. I was not intending to go to the Gingerbread Stout release party. And I'm pulling up, and there are cars everywhere. Like, the Beatles were there. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I was like, oh, God, honey, tell me we didn't come on Gingerbread release day. Sure enough, there's lines out there. Every dumbass is coming out with multiple cases under their arm. And I'm like... You guys know you don't have to do this anymore. Like it was only one year that they really screwed up. They're making tons of this crap. Yeah, you can get it at Food Line now. By the gross. I mean, tons of it. But it has garnered such a cult following that people, like clients I have in other states, are like, "Oh, you're in Richmond. Could you could you bring me some of that gingerbread stout if right. you if you can get it?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'll look for it, Kroger." <laughs> <laughs> like, so quick quick interjection here funny story about the gingerbread stuff so now they do obviously the the different variations on it so they do oh, the, yeah. bur- the bourbon gingerbread stout yeah the christmas morning yeah the christmas morning they have so, like 17 of them this year so the morning Ridiculous. so we had our stash badge for the last like three years at hardywood and we always do the stash badge friday night well because it's friday night usually i go straight from work so my car does not leave hardywood so Saturday morning, of course, right. So Saturday morning, it's traditionally also been the morning of the Richmond Christmas parade, and they're releasing the bourbon barrel oh, gingerbread God. stout, the drunkest day so of the year. In every the Saturday name. morning, I got to weed through parade traffic and a bunch of jabronis trying to pick up <laughs> a, some kind, of, you know, the Kentucky bourbon barrel stout yep. that you're going to be able to get tomorrow with no problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. But they all line up because there's this they still carry that that specter of there's not going to be enough. It's everywhere, people. In fact, it's so plentiful that I went through my stash the, uh, just just today as I was going through because I bought some gingerbread stout because traditionally we like to do a tasting of the gingerbread stout because every year it is a little bit different. Some years it's got more ginger. Some years it's a little more mellow. So every year we like to taste it right after the release just to kind of give our our take. Well, I started going back through, and I not only had this year's gingerbread stout, but I had last year's gingerbread stout, and then I had one from the year before that sitting there. How the hell do you have beer in your house that's two years old? It's a, it's a perfect storm that, that makes that happen. In fact, if you made a Venn diagram, you got one circle over here that alcoholism. <laughs> And then you got another one over here, and it's hoarder. And you bring them together, and right there in the middle is a two-year-old gingerbread stout <laughs> sitting in that Venn diagram. So, and I, I mean, I probably have more floating around in there, but I was blown away, and I was like, "This is amazing." You we, have like a hole in your wall where you hide beers, <laughs> right? You misplaced it underneath the bed. Yeah, you're like, "Oh my god, it's have, a Schlitz from '92." You had <laughs> to throw out a few dead cats. <laughs> To get exactly. to a two-year-old gingerbread stout. Oh, my God, look, the moon landing and a gingerbread stout. <laughs> and a Southpaw. They haven't made that in 20 years. <laughs> That's the truth. You, Killian's I can't find anywhere. Like Red Dog and Killian's are gone. Now, someone sent me a picture Red of dog. a Killian's the other day, but I still can't find that damn dog. 
he gone. <laughs> but so I have three generations of gingerbread stout here tonight. Nowhere else in the world would you be able to do a three year. I don't even think you can do that at Hardywood. But we have, and probably for good reason. I have a bad feeling that three year old one is probably going to be pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's probably gone gone poorly but if if you look in that cooler over there you'll find some that have little gingerbreads on the top like shorter bottles that's this year's and then pull out the big 750 milliliter of one with a regular top and then one with a cork top and that will give us the last three generations of gingerbread stout to try tonight we, we should probably start with the old one right so it only gets better i think that they'll run together on some level we should probably start with the freshie just to see what it's like. Oh, God, look at these three generations of gingerbread stout. They're changing the bottles, too. You can see three years ago, very high end with the cork in it. I hope they didn't go away from the cork because they don't keep. Which one are we starting with? The little one. Now, they've gone, they've gone to more of like the Pliny the Elder size here, which is a little over a pint. So they're, they're doing that. I think, uh, I think that's kind of what the traditional breweries on the West Coast, that's the size they use. I think that's what, why they're going to this. Because honestly, a beer this strong, you don't really want a bunch of them. But when you're recording on Inside the Pallet House, sometimes you want a <laughs> bunch of them. So that's where we'll go. But this, I'm really excited to try this because I have not had a chance to, uh, to dive into this year's. I did try... One they had that was called like the the pancake, and it had like maple added to it, and it was it was really sweet. Like it really sweetened it up. So I don't know what to necessarily. I don't know how many of those you can really put down. Thank you, Chris. I'm excited to try this. This would be this year's version of the gingerbread stout, and I'm hoping it's uh, it's it's going to be awesome. Typically, I find that beers like this, if you let them mellow for a while, they get even better. So. I'm guessing the one from last year is going to be fantastic because it hasn't gone bad, and the three-year one's going to be trash. That's my, it's my guess, but there's only one way to find <laughs> really out. Really looking forward to that. It's awful. Try this. It's going to be good. Oh, I know we go up to my grandparents' house every year for Christmas. My grandfather's the one who like stashes beer and sodas down in the basement, and we pulled this Budweiser that he stuck in the cooler for having everybody up. That was from 1997. What? Yeah. Did you drink it? Uh, yes. And? <laughs> and it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> but was it, did it still like have bubbles? It, it had bubbles. It just tasted really weird. Almost like. I could see that. Drinking a toenail or something like How that. How are the hallucinations? <laughs> are they, are they pretty good? Not bad. <laughs> pretty epic. Yeah. It makes for a hell of a Christmas. You know, you wake up on New Year's Day. Like, I don't know if I should have had that 92 Budweiser. I had a buddy whose grandparents passed away in college, and they were going through his house, and they found a bottle of just regular Jim Beam that was from, like, 1965 or something. I bet that was good. They opened that up, and they said it was smooth. Yeah. I bet something like that ages exceptionally well, because it is, you know, it's a liquor designed to. I don't know how beers keep. It's going to be interesting. That's my first taste of this this year. That's uh, usually I don't go first, but that's pretty damn good. I think that's really smooth. They they've they've mellowed out the ginger on it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it doesn't hit you in the face like it has in the long, in the past. Like three years ago, the one that has the cork in it was over the top gingery. So I'm very interested to see how that one that one holds up. But this one is smooth, man. That is like. That's got a sweetness to it that is, like, spot on that, that really helps cancel out that, that ginger flavor. I don't know. I mean, you know it's a stout just because it's such a heavy beer, but I don't taste a lot of stout in it, really. That's, yeah. that's pretty tasty. I'm, I'm going to make a comment, and I swear I'm not English, but uh, it's almost a little bit too cold. I'm going to let mine warm up a little bit. Ah, you know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the Yeti. And Yetis, uh, Yetis are known for making things a little too cold. You'll get used to that. Or I would recommend you get an Arctic because they're going to keep things right at that 40 degree mark that you may like. <laughs> Whereas I like that 32 and a half at just shy of frozen. That's the Yeti trademark. 
And normally I am all in, but I feel like, you know, when you're tasting something like this fine stout. That it does take away. Little... No, I'll give you that. You, you don't get to taste as much of the flavors because the cold kind of knocks it down a peg. I mean, it needs to be chilled. Oh, if you had this thing warm. I'm not English. It would be like syrup of Ipecac. It would be a <laughs> we, bad. We were on vacation one year, and uh, my uncle's wife is English, and her brother happened to be in town, so he was hanging out with us on the beach. And he got a Budweiser out of my dad's cooler, stuck it in the sand, and went to play Frisbee or something for like 25 minutes. And it was just sitting there on a 90-degree Virginia Beach day in the sand, like buried, like you could only see the top. All right. And then 25 minutes later, he came back and slugged it. I was like, I was, God. Like, I was like seven, and I knew that was the most disgusting <laughs> thing I had ever seen. He's just chewing on the sand, kind of grind those teeth down. It was, it was awful. I was like, I'm in, that is the anti koozie right there. Just bury it in the sand in the sun. Yeah, it was, it was disgusting. Well, good on him. He's, 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 he's true. Uh, he's, <laughs> he sticks to his I always I always thought that that was bullshit That whole like You go to you go to Ireland and people are like Oh you know traditionally you're supposed to drink it Drink the Guinness warm and I'm like that's because Ireland up until Like the early 80s was a third world country And they obviously just didn't have Fucking ice Sitting around I mean that's why they did that You act like oh I do it Because it was the option so I would take my Guinness Out of my Maytag free No you didn't have that Right. Things were just warm So you started drinking it that way So I went over to Ireland and I'm not kidding They have the black Guinness tap And then they have a blue one And it's called Guinness Extra Cold It's like you gotta be <laughs> kidding me I was like all this time I've been lied to that, yo, they just like it warm. You go over there now that they got prosperity, they have extra cold in a blue tap for those of us that are who know better. Like, I was <laughs> like, welcome to the they... first world. Yeah, it's a totally different world. They're, they've been lying to us, and this, this lie has been perpetuated for generations. They like it just as cold as everyone else does. Uh, Hipsters would drink it, though, warm. Just, of just of course. It's cool. yeah. But they don't know that that was a byproduct of poverty. Not because, oh, we choose it this way. Except for apparently your uncle, who just <laughs> takes them out and just jams them in the sand. That guy. Well, if hipsters had been around when he was, it, he probably would have been wearing a scarf that day, too. So, Well, there you go. So, he's a hipster. He's the original hipster. Yeah. Uncle hipster. Chris, what did you think of that beer? I love it. Really? Yeah. Just came right out. You just love it. Yeah, it's great. It's definitely... The gingerbread bite isn't as bad. Yeah. Like, I think this is... It's real smooth. This may be one of the best ones that they've made, I think. Keo, you got a you take on that beer? Yeah, I, I think I'm all in. And it may be, maybe it's... I, I know I was giving shit about the cold, but maybe it is just... It's just a little less... I th yeah. Punch you in the face flavorful that, and not overwhelming. It's, it's very drinkable. So if you're going to give it a, a one to five rating, five being the best... Anything over a three being a Deckley winner, what would you give this? I would, I'd give it a three point two. Okay, so we're just we're just making it over the mark, Chris. What about yourself? I'd give this one a four. Damn, yeah. strong. Yeah, I think uh, gingerbread stouts kind of live in their own world. I can't drink a bunch of them except right. for tonight, which I'll I'm gonna have three of them, but. I think this one, I think I'm with you. I think it's somewhere between that three and a half, four range. I think that is that is fantastic. Now, if I just rank it against gingerbread stouts as I remember them, this is every bit as good as last year's, and I thought last year's was one of the best they'd ever done. So in the gingerbread stout world, it's certainly a four. Right. That's pretty dope. Let's try last year's. 365 days after it was born. The born on date has passed. You've kept this thing cold the whole time, right? That has been sitting the way it's properly supposed to be stored in a dark area that has constant temperature. At least I think. At least where I found it was that way. Constant what temperature? Are we going same cup or are we being... I, I don't strong? have anything left here so I can put it in this cup. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see this, man. These two... These next two are going to be interesting. I wish we had uh, Mike from M4K 
You know, he's been on the first time he came on, he brought us Heady Topper and Pliny the Elder. And I still think that was one of my favorite tastings because both of those beers are impossible to get your hands on. And he had both of them here. And I haven't had a chance to uh, to taste anything like that head to head. And I think this is right up there. He would he would certainly uh, appreciate this. I'm going to tell you, you can smell the gingerbread a lot more on this one. Just Whoa. That's changed. Yeah, for sure. Whoa. That's okay. I don't... Hmm. Coming off that other one, the ginger here is gone. The malt sugar is up. I think for sure. This is like really sweet. Is that what I'm tasting? I don't know what you're tasting. It tastes like a liquefied cake. Yeah, like this has gotten really sweet over a year. That's pretty good, though. Like in its own weird way. I mean, I'm yeah, gonna, that's I'm really gonna, sweet. I'm going to drink really the sweet. Oh, I'm going to drink the rest of it. I'm just trying to figure out where it does taste like cake. Yeah, that means that other one may just come out with frosting <laughs> on it or turd. Like I don't know what that's. This is very interesting. This is like if anyone has these sitting around from last year, which I'm sure there's dozens of us, or I'm just the only long, t- long, long play drunk. This thing's really different. It's really sweet. Yeah, it's like a completely different beer. It really is. And I think I like it. I think I'm going to put that. Ooh. If the other one was a four. One more try. It's you know what it is? It's chocolate now. It's like it's 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 a lot like chocolate. Uh-huh. I lose the ginger. I gain chocolate. Only because I got to pick one. I'm really having a hard time here. I'm going to have to come back. You go. I can't. I can't decide. Well, uh, I don't think it's as good as I don't don't think it's as good as the uh, the other one, the fresh one. So Uh, the fresh one. But I do like it though. So I mean, it's still, it's still at a three. Okay. So you're going to rate it exactly the same. Well, I went three point two on. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Where are you, Chris? Yeah, I'm going three and a half. It's good, but this year's I think I like a little better. I I I I think I agree with that, but I'm having a real hard time differentiating between the two. That last big sip I took was just really good. So yeah, that's I I okay. I'm going to give it a three nine. I will allow this year's to win as far as on the gingerbread stout scale, but it's a totally different beer. So this this whole story about the the vat that got left open slightly and it just slowly leaked yeah and, throughout the night and ran down the drain and was gone forever yes yeah what what percentage of your body believes that story eighty five eighty five yeah I, I I truly believe it was an accident because I think it was the most fortuitous accident in the history of that brewery I think it was the best thing that ever happened to him. But in the short term, it hurt them financially. In the long term, it put them on the map as a world-renowned, or at least regionally renowned, you know, beer. Actually, you know what? The more that aftertaste sits there, it's coming down. As much as I like the flavor, I don't like the way it's sitting. It's going down to a three and a half. This year's is better. Chris, do the honors. It's like there's something in there that shouldn't have sat around for a year. Yeah, if we all have the shits tomorrow. Makes me excited about 2016. This one's going to be good. Now, this one going in was too gingery, I thought. Uh Like, if I recall from three years back, I thought it was, uh, did you just knock yourself out with the (laughs) microphone? That was hilarious. I just heard. (laughs) (laughs) That was hilarious. He's going to have a black eye. What happened last night? I just fell into a mic. It happens to the best of us. That mustache makes you uh, fall forward, you know? <laughs> that's, that's what happens there. You got to get your head used to it. Is that doing anything funny in the way it pours? No, it looks normal so far. Does it have any foam? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. What could go wrong? Salmonella. This is either the cure or the disease. I don't know which it's going to be. I can't wait to try this. Do you want me to pour this directly over this board? Please do not. The IT guy is uh, in Disney. 
that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be potentially problematic. Did you already have a sip of that? No. I, okay. I, just, I just smelled it. Oh. I think it smells less gingery than the last one. So. It smells like brandy to me. I don't know how that's going to go. Speaking of which, don't they also have a brandy gingerbread stout this year? Probably. Whoa. Yes, they do. And so I went there and I had a apple brandy beer that they made that wasn't gingerbread stout. You may as well have poured me a glass of brandy. It was it was hardcore. Like if you if you like brandy, you're going to love that beer. I personally was it was a, it was a little much mm-hmm. for me. But that's And then you know what I did because I was so upset? I bought one that had been soaked in a gin barrel. Like, That'll make it better. Yeah, like I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I was like, I do not like this brandy barrel. Can I get one of those in the gin barrel? And I asked the guy, I said, hey, have you tried that? And he's like, I haven't. We never actually put that on draft. So all we have are these bottles, and I just never tried it. So I've got a completely unknown beer in the house that something tells me isn't going to be any good. But All right, so is anybody telling a difference at all between this one and the last one? This one has more ginger, and it's less sweet. Definitely less sweet. That's, that's what I taste. But it had more ginger going in. I can tell you this. The three-year-old one is better today than it was then, but it has taken on, it has taken on some brandy. Like, it's almost like there might be more alcohol content in there, which is great because I already my face is going numb. <laughs> so that's <laughs> probably not going to work in my favor. We're going to have to uh, add me to the list of charities <laughs> you know, going into next year. Do you guys see that? You kid? act like a child, so it can work out. Thanks, man. I think that's I think that's <laughs> positive. That's good. Did you see that that poor like rugby player who who ate the slug on a dare with his buddies eight years ago? And no. got, this guy ate a slug and got completely paralyzed from eating a slug. Shut up. Not kidding. Like there was some bacteria on the slug and he ate it at a rugby party with all of his buddies. They dared him, he ate it. Got completely paralyzed. The disease finally took him, and I guess like it's, it took eight years, but it, holy it, shit, it finally killed him. He never regained like full function. Did they find this slug from like the rainforest in Venezuela or something like that? I believe it was from Australia. Which good rule of thumb? Oh, don't leave your house if you live in Australia because everything will kill you. Like that's that's a fact. Dingoes. But now I like I look back on my life, and I'm I'm. I'm shocked that I have not run into something like this because there's I can remember a story. This is this is an unfortunate story, but I I had a job. A lot of my stories start like this. <laughs> I had a job. <laughs> it was a good job. <laughs> At the time, it was a really good job. So I had a job. And at that time of prosperity, I had decided that a really good idea was to buy tickets to go see the Bears play the Giants in New York because when prosperity is all you know, traveling up to New York for a weekend to party and watch the Bears, that's no big deal. Yeah, of course, being a Bears fan. Of course you can do it. So while I had money, I purchased tickets. Now, in the time of when I purchased the ticket, and then when the game actually came came around, the job had, had for one reason or another, gone away. I no longer had a job. Didn't have any money. I was on unemployment. And unemployment, if you're taking it, it uh, it gives you enough money to squeak by, but it'll it'll never allow you to like travel across state lines to go see a great game and spend a weekend partying. So I had gone to New York, broke as can be. Now the first mistake I made is I went and stayed with one of my buddies who was living all the prosperity one could imagine. Wait, so at this point, were you thinking, screw it, I've got, already got these tickets, I'm going to go and party up this weekend. I had a buddy that was that was going up for the game as well, so right. I had a ride. It's like All I had to do was pay like a percentage of gas because there were like three of us in the car. It's like, this is still a good idea. I'll go up there. I get up there, and the very first night, my buddy's like, we're going out. You ever been to the meatpacking district in New York? And I'm like, no, that doesn't sound like a place I want to go. And he's like, no, the clubs there are so hot. I'm like, oh, great. We get to this first club. It's like $40 at the door. I'm like, oh, I was not accounting for that. Okay, boom. That's like that's like 25% of my unemployment check gone, and I haven't even had a drink. We get in there, and he's like, 
dude, we're doing bottle service. And I'm like, no, I think we should just get natural lights over here, like in a bucket maybe. I think you get a deal. No, nah, bottle service. So then we're doing bottle service. I'm like, this is not going well. Next night, same thing. And I'd been bitching. I don't have this kind of money, man. This isn't good. Like, I can't do this. Next night, he's like, no, we'll stay in Long Island. Like, won't cost a whole lot. Asshole takes us to another club, partying it up all night. I have completely decimated my funds. At this point, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to eat. I don't know how I'm getting home, but I've got a ticket to the game. And I get back to his house, and he's got this fish tank. And this fish tank is disgusting. I mean, it is just murky. And, like, the guys are, like, when they're finishing beers, they're, like, crushing out what's left in the beer into the <laughs> tank. And I'm just like, dude, like, that is horrible. And he's got this albino frog that's a typical-sized frog, and it's just swimming around in this tank. Albino frogs, to start with, are gross. You put them in this environment, you've stepped it up to a whole other level of disgusting. And I'm just like, guys, you guys aren't taking care of this. Like, this is disgusting. And his roommate's like, I'll pay you a hundred bucks to eat that thing. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think he knows who he's talking to right now. Like, how, how big is said frog? Uh, smaller than my fist, but, Ooh. but not by a lot. You know, like the fact that I'm using a fist as a, as a marker, that's a bad sign. Did you go chew or swallow? Well, I at first had to debate it for a little <laughs> bit. I was like, I don't know that this is a great decision. Cause I know you're usually a swallower. Well, as all, <laughs> as all grown up should be, let's be honest. But so I was like, I was like, boy, $100, that would be just enough to get me to the game. Like, I already have the ticket. It would be able to buy me a few beers. I might even be able to get a hot dog. I was like, shit. So I'm like weighing the options. And I was like, you know what? I might eat that damn frog. And was cooking it an option? No, he was like, in the moment, okay. it was like, it was like a, one of those just fratastic moments. Right. And I, I, I think back to this this poor guy who ate the slug. I mean, I was in that same <laughs> moment. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's like, do it, do it. And I'm like, I should do it. I should. And I, I just. It's going to be epic, bro. <laughs> you're going to love this. And I'm like, and I'm telling you, I'm like, you're, you're really going to pay me $100. And I think he's, at this point he's realizing, oh, God, this guy has no prospects, no money. <laughs> like, he's going to do this. Right. And I'm like, you serious? He's like, oh, I'm dead serious. Like, okay. And I grabbed that frog, and I remember I just threw it in my mouth. And that frog, it must have sensed that there was trouble. <laughs> <laughs> because, it's, yeah, its animal instincts really kicked in. And I remember the first time it went in my mouth, it jumped back out. <laughs> So it actually got out, out of my mouth. And I was like, son of a bitch. I had to go like chase it down and got it again. Threw it back in my mouth and then just, just swallowed. Because oh. I was like, I, mean, I can't bite into this damn thing. Like, that'd be cruel. And I'm not a cruel person. So the second time it went in your mouth, it was better. <laughs> the second time was much better than the first. The first time I wasn't quite prepared. And I left my mouth. You never are. A little agape. <laughs> how, quickly, how quickly did it pee in your mouth? You know, I've, I've often thought about that, and, and everything was so wet in the moment <laughs> that I don't know how much of that was pee, but you got to believe that as the frog realized that its demise was now imminent, that urination was probably on the short list of reactions. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it's a good, good point of reference. If you're going to eat an animal, it should be an amphibian that just came out of the water. You know, when you put it that way, it almost sounds foolish that I ate this. So is it kind of like a penny with frogs? Swallow a penny, you see it again, comes out whole. I don't know. I don't know how You didn't that, see said frog again? I don't know. I never <laughs> did see said frog again. But I do remember when I, when I swallowed, it didn't want to give up. Oh. And it was working its way back oh. up. Like, it still somehow knew its bearings. Like, this is victories up. Right, right. <laughs> Problems are down. Right. I guess that just kicks in. And it was kicking, kicking. I had to feel it. Better he was trying to find his way to heaven. Yeah, well, he found his way somewhere. Unfortunately, I did eat this this sack of shit, oh. and and I swallowed it. it. Kicked. I mean, the whole way, the whole way. There was there did wasn't. I did a lot of things, <laughs> <laughs> but so I got the frog down, and I uh, I ended up just passing out soon thereafter. Yeah. Probably because when you're in the state of mind where <laughs> you're like, I think I'm gonna eat this frog for the hundred dollars so I can get right. a hot dog tomorrow, you're probably a little little drunk. 
And so I did. I passed out pretty quickly. I woke up the next morning, though, and I'm not kidding. I woke up to the guy coming in, and he dropped 100 bucks on me, and he was like, I still can't believe you did that. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and at that moment, I was like, this was so worth My it. My life is saved. I spent the next, like, hour in the bathroom though like my body was rejecting every bacterium on that thing i had a horrible morning going into the game and had to take multiple deuces in porta potties during the tailgate and in the stadium so i know everything about a new york new york tailgate right good and bad but i got enough money to go go through that but then i look i look at this poor guy and i'm just like damn like that could have been that moment that would have defined my life and ended it because you don't know. I mean, you can't do that stuff. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I don't know how that came up. I thought you were going to say he dropped the hundred dollars on you, and then your other boy yelled, "Brandon, you owe me a hundred dollars for that bottle service last night." Oh, I would have been, I would have been livid. I would have been livid. Now I went to that game. Bears won. It was a good, it was a good game that involved a lot of bathroom trips, unfortunately. But so I, I just, I, I feel for that guy. I digress. So there you have it, kids. 2016 gingerbread stout and fro. Tastes like fro. <laughs> that right there is the problem with gingerbread stout. It's so strong that it'll, it'll just jog your memory of horrible stories, unfortunately. <laughs> but this thing is, is, is interesting. Hey, you guys, I've been talking, so you guys have probably tasted it. Do you guys have a, an opinion on that beer? I really don't think it was as bad as I was afraid the age was going to make it. I don't think it was as good as the other two, though. No. Uh, it's definitely in the third rank. Two range. Two I range. think I disagree. I think the new one is the best. The three-year-old is the second best. And then the two-year-old, I think, actually was, was the worst. So we're going to go 3-5 for the two, 3-7-5 for the three, and then the four. That's where I'm putting it. Yeah, I think the order might have thrown me off. If I had them in a different order, I might rank them differently, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that makes sense. But I like the kind of the two ends of the spectrum. I like the really smooth one, which is the new one from this year. Yep. And I like the sweet one, which turned out to be last year's. I think if we've learned anything, is that this year's gingerbread stout is fantastic. I don't think Most definitely. It is a strong beer. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any denying that, that they knocked it out of the park this year. And from what I can tell... They made a boatload because they have, what, 14 different varieties, you guys said? Right. Some, and it, it really was. There's like a release of two every week for the next, like, up until Christmas. Right. So there's a boatload of them coming. Well, in order to do that, you have to make a whole hell of a lot of gingerbread stout to make each one of those, you know, have the ability to go out there into the universe. Yeah. They got Tennessee syrup, uh, Kentucky jelly. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not, that's not one. That's not? No, Kentucky jelly. That's a lubricant. Oh. That's a lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, so that goes down as. I actually, we were talking about that Kentucky jelly, and then it, it, it we went into Astroglide talk. Yep. And we were we were all in here talking about how everybody knows what Astroglide is. Right. There's no way you don't know what Astroglide is. We got more feedback from people being like, had never heard of Astroglide. Really? To you degenerates started <laughs> talking about it. Like, clear, do you know what Astroglide is? No. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I, I think that I surround myself with degenerates. Right. And then it's like, see, we all know what this stuff is. And then it gets the, the word goes out into the real world and people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's disgusting. It's a it's it's a really high end lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write that down. <laughs> yes. I would just stick with Kentucky jelly. I think it's uh it's pl- plenty good. Horrible flavor. Horrible flavor. You should try some of the other states' jellies. They're much better. <laughs> Kentucky's jelly is trash. <laughs> it's just not very good stuff. No. Again, I digress. <laughs> Dude, I'm glad you got to try the stout this year, though. That yeah. was excellent. Yeah. That was excellent. I'm very excited about the new batch, though. I think that's, uh, that's the one. So for M4K, Keo, we had the first stop, Vasen. How many more stops before the stash bash? All right, so we got to check in every week until the stash bash. So next week is Midnight Brewery. Well, what's this week? Or I guess this will come out. Or this week, sorry. When this comes out, this will. This week is Midnight Brewery. Okay. Uh, next week is Three Notched Brewery. 
I think Midnight Brewery is the 14th. I only know that because... Did I just say Midnight? Oh, man. Because we're actively looking at... We're actively looking at doing possibly a remote from there. Sweet. But I don't know if it's going to work out because Ely's in charge of, of setting it up. Right. And I haven't I have not heard back that it's it's a go, but we were talking about actually trying to do an actual remote from there, which would be a mess because it's going to be full of mustached, you know, people hooting and hollering. And I saw on that list, you guys are going to be heading back to the answer. The answer is the last week right before the stash bash. So nice. it's I don't know that I'll be going to the answer. On and I don't see eye to eye. What? <laughs> Are you serious? I just I just don't know that uh, that he so, likes Miatas in the same way that I do. Unfortunately. <laughs> so so this week is Final Gravity. Have you ever been to Final Gravity? I have not. I've heard so, it, I've heard it's pretty good. I like the beers. I, I've heard it's very IPA kind of beers. So maybe Final not up your Gravity alley, but. is. So we have we have micro brews, and they're a step below that. As far as the yield that they put out, I cannot remember what it what it was, but yeah, like what's more micro than a micro penis? This no brew <laughs> micro brew. <laughs> it's uh, but it is it is it's one step down because they make so little. Final Gravity started as a place where I would go to buy hops and malt to make my own brew. So they are a true like home brewer place. In fact, it's where I go to refill the CO two for my kegerator. I drive out there, and the only reason I go there, it's not because they do such a great job of pumping CO2 into a <laughs> tank. The beers are stupid good, like really, really good. And they do some, they do one in particular they do with like firefighters, and they, I think they actually give some of the, the proceeds to, and it's, it's fantastic. So this will come out on Thursday. So this will come out the day after Final Gravity. Yeah, so unfortunately, people are going to miss it. Right. But but the hardcores should have already gone to InsideThePalletHouse.com of course. and clicked on the mustache and gone to the website. So and they should already be right. fully aware of this. So I shouldn't what, be... What they won't be aware of, but will be aware of when they're listening and drinking their crowler out of it, is that we are giving away crowler koozies to all the growers that come show up at Final Gravity. Are you serious? Nice. Oh, yeah. Co-branded Final Gravity crowler koozies. And they are hot. Sweet. That place Good is... looking. <laughs> Not Paris Hilton. <laughs> that's hot. <laughs> so hot. No, that's gonna. In fact, be... I might bring a little dog in my purse. Now we're talking. <laughs> if you make a video that night, we'll uh, we'll release it on InsideThePowderHouse.com, <laughs> or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just redirect you <laughs> something else. Lemonpot.org. So, <laughs> so this week is Final <laughs> Gravity. The and following week is Midnight Brewery. And that's where we'd like to try to do a remote. Like I said, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes. I've never out. been up there. It's it's excellent. And the guy who uh, who does it, I think he he's a well, obviously he's a local guy, but he uh, I think he I think he was a Radford guy. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it really good beer though. They and they do really interesting stuff like strawberry. They do a banana nut bread one and like different things. Conveniently so, enough, there's like a. a Seventy percent chance I'll spend the night at a Radford guy's house that night because I don't want to come back to Richmond. No, it's right around the corner from there. And if I do, if I end up doing a remote from there, the odds of me coming back are, are not not great. I'm with you. <laughs> Who knows? We may be bunking up, buddy. But it's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. So after after uh, Midnight Brewery, yeah. What- so Midnight Brewery on eleven fourteen, and then eleven twenty one, we're going to Three Notched. Which three notched really between the, the two that are coming up after that, three notched and the answer, they don't really need but so much publicity. I mean, those guys, three notched makes a beer yeah. that's getting a ton of a ton of press right now in their uh, it's that IPA they make. I can't remember. The Falcon Smash? No, that's no, that's uh, triple crossing. Ah. That that is stash bash. The Falcon stash, you mean. Falcon stash is that, and that's where it's going down this year. The actual, because that's what I was getting at. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly building. So we're gonna do. All right, so we're skipping around a little bit. Yeah, give, give so, it to us in order for everybody that is listening. If you guys aren't a grower, how about you jump on the team now? Because if, if now you're not a grower, you're more than welcome to still come and check us out and and see what we're all about and see how much fun we're having. So next year you become a grower because like we're all that. about exposure. We're all about 
getting you guys to realize how awesome it can be to raise money and how easy it can be to raise money for some kids. I hope it's easy because so far I've raised zero dollars. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put the <laughs> put it out there to the team. You, you listeners aren't doing anything for me here. I'm at zero. I checked it right before we went on the air. I was like, well, that's not good. And then I think that prompted me to do my first Facebook post ever. There I was you like, go. I was like, boy, I need to let my mother know. You know, I haven't <laughs> done anything yet. I can't figure out why nobody's searching out my name and donating to me. I thought, I thought that I would just be able to put it out on the podcast and enough people would go to insidethepallethouse.com, click on the link, go to the page, find all of us, and just start showering us with gifts. But unfortunately, our demo, the listeners, have gotten so accustomed to things costing nothing <laughs> that they've really embraced the free, the free nature of this show, and uh, they, haven't, they haven't stepped up. But I also think, in some respects, my mustache is weak. And right. maybe they want to see they want to see a little something. Proof is in the pudding, my friend. I mean, well, and that's I assume you already have donations because you have a sweet mustache. Uh, no, I've only got one donation, and it's from somebody that felt bad that he wasn't going to grow this year. So I'm all about the late run. Okay, then maybe I don't yeah. feel so bad. You've I'm, got I'm donations. Opposite. Yeah, you came in hard right yeah. out the box. It was October thirty first. Hard and fast. It was October 31st, and you had a few hundred dollars. on. I That's was like, right. Yeah, Chris, I was like, is, this showing, starts tomorrow. Chris is showing up on the leaderboard. I yeah, hit number true. nine at one point. That's crazy. To me. Out of 160 people. Yep. Impressive, man. Impressive. It's not going to last. <laughs> no. <laughs> it no, can it won't. last with your help. And that's it. I think that's what we're getting at. And if you guys do want to come down, I, I encourage anyone who does donate to the team to go to the Stash Bash, the one that's actually going to be out uh, at Triple Crossing. Right. You know, I think I think that Friday, November 30th. That's going to be a really good time and I would I would encourage listeners to to make the pilgrimage donate to the cause. I don't I honestly I really don't care who you donate to as long as you donate to the cause. Just I I, w- I would do it for our team. You got you got eight choices there. So pick someone on the team. But even that if you want to go outside find Keo Keo is is a fantastic representation of of what this is about. For sure, you can find uh, Mike Jackson. You know he's been on the show many a time. He has helped us out. You could donate to him. Just make sure you uh, you hashtag it ITPH so they know where you're coming from. I think they would probably get a kick out of seeing that. But if you if you uh, want to donate to the team, please do so. If you want to join the team, there's still time to do that. But then donate and come on down for the stash bash. I think it would be a really good time. And I think, from what I know, Troy's going, Ely's going, I'm going, Chris, you're going. Uh, Troy's going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> what have we got here? We- A fucking comedian. And we always have some fantastic mustache-inspired costumes, so. I think we're going to Brendan's already got his picked out, from what I hear. Yeah, it's Snoopy's cousin. It's gonna yeah, be- when people dress up, it's a good party. Oh, it's absolutely. And, and, and the fact that it's, it's a month after Halloween, it really confuses the shit out of people. <laughs> so, so to put it in perspective, we've, we've got those awards I was talking about. The, the highest fundraiser is named the, the Goose Award because the guy that won it for the first like four or five years would always dress up as Goose and still does dresses up as Goose. Nice. The uh, recruiter recruiting award is named the, the Wolf from... Uh, what is it, Pulp Fiction? <laughs> ah, the fixer. Yeah, the fixer. <laughs> Win- Winston Wolf. And that's called the Wolf Award because he always just shows up in a tux. I can respect that. And that sweet. dude, that dude could drive fast. And he drives real fast. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. <laughs> My man that dresses up like him does not have an Aston Martin, though. That's unfortunate. You know what would fix that? If you guys just started shaving about 20% off the top of the donations. <laughs> You could probably award an Aston Martin to the winner of the Wolf every year. I'm just saying, but this is why I'm not the president and why you are. Because while you're the president, it stays 100% of in-kind donations hey, go directly. We remain above board. Brendan has no financial decision <laughs> whatsoever. And that is also a really good selling point, is that any money you donate to me, I will never actually have... It goes directly to the coffers that, that Keo's in charge of. 
So it will find its way to the charities as opposed to putting me in a sweet Aston Martin. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we have better people better than myself in charge. I just grow. I just grow. That's my job. And I'm excited to be part of it, man. So thank you so much for, yeah, for, definitely. for being the president this year, for, uh, for keeping this thing going. I know you guys have an incredible team. I, I did not realize the amount of camaraderie that I would notice when I went to that very first check-in and everybody was there and talking. It was like people kept coming up, talking to us. It was a very welcoming environment. I realized that this is really just a lot of good people raising money for a really good cause and doing it in a really weird way. Like growing a mustache, <laughs> four uh, kids, and yeah, yeah, and there's no doubt. But I mean, that's the coolest part, though, is we have so much fun doing it. Like the the coolest part's coming out every Wednesday to our different check ins and just having a couple of beers with the guys, and it's an amazing networking event. Like I've met so many people that are in completely different lines of work, but brighten your horizons on in the Richmond area and just get you to know people. So, yeah, I was talking to people there who are like. These are the kind of people you want to mingle with. I mean, it, it, it's funny you say that because from a networking perspective, you are meeting people who are, are much closer to being pillars of our society than the dregs, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it, I, was, I was blown away with just as you start talking to people, you're like, these are, these are good people through and through. And then you start asking them what they do. And, you know, oh, I own this company and, and, and do this. Like, damn, well, well played, sir. So it's a really, really awesome cause. But great, great group of guys. So excited. Speaking of that, is there are we ever going to make a concession where where women can become growers? Is there I know there's always been talk of it. I don't know how to do it. Unless I mean, at M4K, we're equal opportunity. So if there's any ladies out there that that feel like they can, you know, run with us, we are more than welcoming. We will not judge. Even if they have a really weak stash. I mean, no more than, you know, we're going to make fun of you. Yeah, I was about to say, as I threw that out there, I was like, oh, God, I'm going to win the. Best female grower award. It's not. It's going to be unfortunate. <laughs> but as long as there's no other women there, I got a fighting chance. Yeah. So shoe in. Yeah. Exactly. We used to have. We used to have a weakest stash. When for a while we had some other different awards before we we started raising a little more money and had to become a little more couth. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see yeah. how that would lend itself. We also had a dirtiest stash, and um, our buddy uh, John. He would he would clean up. Oh, he clean. He, one one year he came as Lieutenant Dangle. From, oh, from Reno nine one one. I do remember that outfit, and let me tell you, spot on. Yeah, well played, well, sir. The next year he upped himself and came as uh, one of one of the brothers from uh, It's Always Sunny. The uh, oh, God, what, what are those? What are their names? You got Charlie. You got Mac. You no, got no, no, no. One of one of those oily brothers that. Oh, those guys. Yeah, that and Dennis, makes Dennis buried their sense. sister. Like that those makes dudes. Yep, that makes perfect he, sense. And he came in just a bathrobe. It was the most disgusting. Nice. <laughs> and that's when we put it to an end. That was the. You were the, like, this is just going to get worse. We just got to <laughs> shut this down. We're yeah, going downhill. All we're responsible. Time, all people. time dirtiest stash. Well, I like the idea of us just coming as Tombstone because we could just all show up as Western, walk in like a gang. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I also heard that we have uh, Nick has been talking smack, uh, who was on our team last year, the fastest dash in the West. He out chugged Ely twice last year because Ely traditionally in my universe is the fastest chugger I've ever seen. And well, there's always those outliers, but in my, you know, close friends, Ely usually wins. And this guy, Nick came in last year and put Ely to shame, not once, but twice. And he has been talking talking shit on a text message chain of, of the team, and he's he's looking to uh, to challenge some people and retain his his fastest stash title. I'm not kidding. He has business cards that say "Ask me about my mustache." Fastest stash in the West has a QR code that if you scan takes directly to his donation page. It is over the top what this guy has going on, and I don't know why. Even though I know I can't beat him, I've just started talking shit. <laughs> I'm just like, you can't beat me. That's a genius idea, though, because you cross over, you know, you, you come across people all the time, you, you just know, hand just out the day card. to day, and yep. you tell them, oh, I'm doing it for M4K. Yeah, it's this charity. Go to my Facebook page. They're never going to go They're to never going to do it. Page. Here's the card. Right. Fastest stash in the West. Scan here. Boom. You're right to his page. And as he put it, he said, no, I'm in it to win it. 
He's like, I'm getting after it. So he made up the cards. He's That's doing awesome. this. I got to respect it. But something about his level of excitement makes me want to take him down a peg. And I'm like, you can't chug. Start training. I honestly, I think I'm going to start like chugging waters and stuff because I probably have a week before this guy comes down and, and really tries to put it on. And I need to at least make a showing because I know I can't beat Healy and he handily beat Healy. You might want to bump the waters up to at least a course light because don't forget we're, this party goes on at Triple Crossing. So there's going to be a lot of microbrews there and I don't think they have any course light or Miller light there. This one chug, it's all, it's all or nothing. Because those high-octane beers, I can only have so many before that I hit that point of diminishing returns, and I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a decisive victory on Mike, walk away. That's what I want. Now, it's a pipe dream. It's like I asked my parents for a go-kart every year for like seven years for Christmas. Never once got it. Never stopped asking, and I will keep talking shit to this guy, <laughs> even though I know I'm never getting that go-kart. It's all good. <laughs> Again, I'll be the treasurer one year. We'll fix the glitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess I'll never hold a, a, a position at this organization, and that's fine. <laughs> Not really on the short list at this point. No, I've been I've been actually angling to never have to do anything more than grow a mustache and raise money. So I think I'm laying the groundwork, solid foundation. So, but but look, Keo, thank you so much for coming out, and thank you for what you're doing for this organization and and keeping it going. I really am. I'm I'm honored to be part of it, and I'm honored that our our listening audience gets to gets to take place in this every November. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. I appreciate you having me on and just being able to get the word out. It's everything we're all about right now. So we just want to try and you know, like our tagline says, let's grow this thing, man. That's right. What's the website they can go to if they want to donate? You can go to m4k.org, and then you click on Donate to a Grower. You can pick your favorite grower, or you can just go to the general donation page, and uh, and and everything is all above board. It's all tax deductible. As, as I said before, we're official 501c3, so everything is fully tax deductible. We give you a receipt once you put that in. It comes right to you in an email. Everything's above board. That's perfect, man. Well, again, excited, glad to be part of it. Chris, thanks for joining the team, man. Yeah, man. Glad to have you on board. I wish your mustache was a little little weaker than mine, but that's not that's not the case. But we'll just we'll give it some time. I'll get there. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, do go out there, donate, go to m4k.org. And uh, don't is m4k.org, not m4k Richmond. M4k Richmond.org. I'm sorry, m4k Richmond.org. Or you can always go over to inside the pallet house dot com and click on the giant mustache on the page it's pretty easy to find it's the big mustache grow hard yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in if you haven't had a chance to reach out on the facebook page please do so or reach out to it out to us at itph podcast on twitter and instagram we'd love to hear from you or inside the pallet house at gmail.com and send us some topics we'd be glad to talk to you We'll be growing all month and talking to you about it. Looking forward to, uh, to, to you joining the team or donating. Thank you guys so much for everything. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs>